You are probably aware that bank fees of all kinds are going sharply upward. We're now being charged more than ever for basic services and even more for overdrafts, late pay, interest, and such. Not satisfied with those higher fees and trillions of dollars of taxpayer bailouts, banks are now contemplating what they call bail-ins and negative interest rates on your deposit accounts. That is secret code, which means when you loan the bank your money in the form of your deposits, they're going to take some of your money for trusting them to protect your money. The term negative interest rates is a convoluted way of saying that instead of paying you interest on your money, they will pay themselves interest from your money. Now, there's one small point they didn't make clear with the term negative interest rates, that it only applies to your deposits and does not apply to your loans and credit card interest. Those will still have the traditional positive interest rates. So more accurately, the term should be negative interest rates if it benefits the bank, but not you. So how did the bank regulators allow this? Firstly, the bank, big banks basically regulate themselves, so they do whatever they want. Secondly, the theory is that they tried to stimulate the economy by printing up a bunch of money. You remember quantitative easing. They did that a bunch of times, and it didn't quite seem to do the job. So they have to try something else. If they print any more money, they will cause hyperinflation. So they've decided that by penalizing you for having money in the bank, you will take your money out of the bank, spend it, and that will stimulate the economy. As if that won't cause hyperinflation. You see, it's not so important if the solution works or if it makes any sense at all. What is important is that banks be allowed to steal money from your accounts. So if all of that is not bad enough, banks are also committing more seizures and confiscations of funds on behalf of the IRS and other federal and government agencies since the government has mismanaged itself into bankruptcy and is scrounging desperately for funds to keep their government pensions from backsliding. Banks have even agreed to report their customers to the government as suspicious in what they call SARs, Suspicious Activity Reports, if you transfer or withdraw a lot of cash. If you are my age, you grew up thinking that transferring cash through a bank was a normal thing to do. Now, they have decided that makes you a criminal, or a terrorist, or a tax cheat, and your bank is eager to put federal police on you for committing some of your normal banking activity. Since 2010, literally every major bank operating in the United States has been convicted for criminal fraud upon their customers, investors, shareholders, and regulators. Even though those banks have been convicted of crimes and paid fines for those violations, not one banking official has been prosecuted or convicted. Just the bank, not the officials, not the people. The actual criminals have gone right on doing what they're doing, and the government simply kept the penalty fees they collected and did not bother to share those funds with any of the victims. Millions of homes have been stolen by banks through fraudulent and defective foreclosures, and no victim has gotten their home back even though the banks were convicted for stealing their homes. Billions have been stolen from investors through fraudulent mortgage-backed securities. And again, neither government nor the banks have restored the losses sustained by the victims. This is not money that simply vanished. It is trillions of dollars stolen from us by bankers and government with impunity. The tens of billions of penalty money collected by government goes to enrich government. They simply keep for themselves the money they take in fines, fees, and penalties, and that money never finds its way to any restoration of any of the fraud and crime victims for whom they are supposed to be providing justice. There's no longer any pretense of protecting the public or enforcing justice. Banks and government are now in some weird partnership to drain as much money from you and I as possible, as quickly as possible. 
This is not the normal business of government and banks. This is a clear sign of greedy desperation and radical departure from the public interest. When the institutions which control your money and put you in jail become greedy and desperate, there is no question whatsoever that will not go well for you and I. Since 1913, when private world bankers seized the privilege to create and manage our nation's currency, those bankers gained control of government finance and forced government to control us on behalf of the bankers. Bankers staged a takeover of our government's finances and policies and turned you into a servant, slave, and major donor to the cause. Bankers don't control things to make the world a better place. Bankers control things so they can take your money. So the massive authority and force of our government is being misused to rob us on behalf of criminal bankers. We have a major problem on our hands. Most people don't even realize that the entire income tax system is a fraud and a farce and serves no purpose other than to pay criminal bankers interest on money they print up out of thin air. That money they take through the IRS is the money you need to put your kids through college and pay for your security in your old age. Imagine how wealthy those 20 or 30 banking families are if they are taking a major portion of the wealth of every family in the United States every year. It gives the word disparity a whole new meaning. Unimaginable damage has been done, and it looks like they are only getting started. So the big picture is that you and I can no longer trust any bank with our money. The world has changed, and the banks have turned against us. Believe it or not, banks have always committed crimes against us and our finances. It's just that now the crimes are out in the open, pervasive, and not limited by any moral or legal constraints, and not effectively prosecuted by our justice system. Many of us are now just realizing that doing business with a bank, a lender, or a credit card company is basically playing with a time bomb of lifelong debt slavery, obligation, and financial hopelessness. They essentially put that wording in all the papers they ask us to sign. If you don't believe your bank deposits are in harm's way, I strongly suggest you ask your bank manager the following questions. You can copy and paste and print these questions from the information box below this video. The reason it is so important to bring these questions up with your bank manager is that most people who work in banks are probably in denial of the fact that their employer is a convicted criminal. And they are in denial of the danger that it poses to you and your money. They may believe they're providing a worthwhile service, and they may not even think about the devastation that their bank may be committing against your financial survival. They are delusional. They see themselves as merely bank employees, and they simply don't want to face the fact that they are criminal accomplices. These questions may help wake them up. Preferably, you would pose these questions to the bank manager. So the questions, here we go. If criminals from this bank or the federal government demand that you give them the money from my accounts, what will you do to protect my funds? If someone from the IRS or a federal agency demands that you hand over my funds, Will you investigate that request for criminal wrongdoing before depleting my accounts? If the bank or the government decide to deplete, seize, or confiscate my deposit funds, will I be notified by you in time to withdraw and protect my funds? Does this bank act as an agent for third parties who may take claim on my deposited funds? Do you consider your bank to have the right to seize my funds without my consent? Do you understand that if money is wrongly depleted from my account, that all parties who are complicit in that are equally criminally liable, including yourself? 
Do you understand that failure to answer my questions or failure to make positive indication of your intention of lawful conduct may constitute admission of your intention to commit criminal wrongdoing? Has this bank ever been prosecuted for fraud or wrongdoing upon its customers, investors, shareholders, regulators, or the public at large? Please provide the accounting which indicates the solvency of this bank. So those are some questions you may think of more. Remember, asking the questions is not the end of it. If you are going to feel like your money is safe, you will need to like the bank manager's answers to those questions. If they look you in the eye and happily tell you that they will not protect your money, I strongly suggest you not put your money in that bank. It may be a good idea to submit those questions in writing so that you can get answers in writing and signed by the bank manager or a bank official or employee. If they fail or refuse to answer your questions, that may be equivalent to a confession of criminal intent. When you see your bank manager's answers to those questions, you will probably think twice about putting any more money than necessary in any bank. Most competent investment advisors these days are telling savers to get more of their money out of the bank, out of Federal Reserve notes, and out of any investment instrument that is denominated in Federal Reserve notes. If you think that asking those questions will stress your relationship with the nice people at your bank, do not forget that banks are not there to provide a social club for you. Your life savings is more important than happy talk with your bank teller twice a week. People who seize and steal money from you are not your friends, no matter how cordially they may greet you. They are there to profit from you. We have assumed that in return, they will protect our money, but the actions of banks show they do not actually do that. If you ask them those questions, you will find out they don't even intend to protect your money. They don't even see that as one of their purposes. We have been very lax about checking the qualifications and integrity of the people and the institutions we trust our money with. Your money is the sum of your life's work. It is your well-being, your survival. It is what sustains your existence and provides your future and creates security for you and your loved ones. Where you put that money and who you trust it with is very important to you. If you believe in protecting your earnings and savings and you ask your bank manager those questions, please post a note about your bank's responses in the comments below this video. Those comments will make a very important reference for anyone who may not yet understand the danger of doing typical banking business in today's world.